Welcome, everyone. Today, we will decode for you the U.S. federal and state government contracts and compliance solutions regarding request for proposal, brought to you by Dynamic Contracts Consultants. So, let's get started. Exactly what is Request for Proposal RFP? A federal government RFP process is a tool used by the federal government to solicit proposals from interested vendors. Small business and large Department of Defense prime contractors use the request for proposal process to plan, prepare, bid on service contracts, and construction projects. FAR Subpart 15.2, Solicitation and Receipt of Proposals and Information, is the main guidance for government solicitations and RFPs. Usually, solicitation document used in negotiated procurement is used when the agency or buyer reserves the right to award without further verbal or written negotiation. Only the acceptance of agency or buyer is required to form a binding contract. The agency can choose to negotiate further. There are seven rules to remember for an RFP. Number one, read the proposal package. We cannot stress that enough. Make a copy of the proposal package. Do not mark up the original proposal package. Never submit a proposal based on the fact that you might be able to do the job. And finally, never, 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 never make a unilateral change to any aspect of a solicitation, an awarded contract, or a contract modification. RFP is a solicitation used in negotiated acquisition to communicate government requirements to prospective contractor and to solicit proposals. The RFP must contain the following clauses. Solicitation, Contract Form, SF33, we will show that to you shortly. Also, clauses including supplies and services and prices and costs, description, specifications, statement of work, packaging and marking, inspection and acceptance, deliveries or performance, contract administration date, special contract requirements, contract clauses, list of attachments, representations, certifications, and other statements of offerers, instructions, conditions, and notices to offerers, and along with evaluation factors for award, unnecessary for sole source acquisitions. And here is the form SF33 we mentioned earlier for you to take a look at. Other items that are included in the RFP that must be shown, DD Form 254, Work Breakdown Structure, WBS, Top 3 Levels, Proposal Compliance Matrix, Model Contract, Government Furnished Equipment, GFE, List. A Request for Proposal, abbreviated RFP, is a solicitation by a government entity or agency for products or services from public contractors and vendors. By law, government agencies are required to issue bids publicly whenever they are in need of a specific product or service. This is standard policy in order to prevent insider bidding, where companies are being awarded contracts secretively. It is also beneficial for the government agency itself because it creates competition, resulting in lower prices for them. An RFP is more than just a request for quotation. It is an actual request to perform a specific project or supply a specific product. Requests for proposals will generally be issued when requirements for the project at hand are of $25,000 or more. Oftentimes they are issued when the selection of a supplier cannot be made solely on the basis of the lowest price. An RFP is used to procure the most cost-effective solution based upon evaluation criteria identified in the RFP. In certain cases, when the value of a government contract exceeds $100,000 and when it necessitates a highly technical product or service, the government may buy by negotiation. 
buying by negotiation involves the issuance of a request for proposal or request for quotations and the negotiation of each element in the proposal. An award is made to the proposer who has the best proposal in terms of both technical, content, and price. Negotiation procedures may be applied to more or less standard items when negotiation authority has been properly documented by the contracting office. Products or services may be purchased by negotiation when it is impossible to draft adequate specifications or to describe fully the specific item, service, or project. When buying by negotiation, the government uses procedures that differ from sealed bidding. Buying by negotiation is authorized in certain circumstances by law under applicable federal regulations, Federal Acquisition Regulation, or FAR. Contracts are often negotiated over advanced technology, not widely supplied by small businesses, and may include very complex areas of research and development, projects connected with highly sophisticated systems, missile programs, and aircraft and weapons systems. In most instances, the government uses oral solicitations for purchases less than $25,000, written solicitations for purchases over $25,000, and purchase cards to obtain micro-purchases less than $2,500. The government purchases goods and services in every industry imaginable. It buys from pencils to jets. The following is a list of common goods and services procured by the various government agencies. Architectural, cleaning and custodial, construction, remodeling, building materials, consulting services, environmental and conservation, financial and accounting services, and more. Now let's take a look at how we should write an RFP. Once you've identified a bid or contract to respond to, the next step is acquiring the bid package. Most of the time, this information is downloadable as a Word or Adobe document. Depending on government agencies, sometimes you will need to contact the purchasing office at the government agency for the solicitation document. Before writing any proposals, you need to do the following homework. Consider the return on investment associated with submitting a proposal. Is the cost of writing the proposal acceptable in terms of the potential for new business, even if you don't win it. Take time to review the RFP and understand what the government agency wants. Understand the competition and how to beat it. Refine your approach. Write a draft executive summary and define discriminators, themes, and features along with benefits. Bids are used in sealed bidding purchases and proposals involve awards to be made following negotiation. Proposals always should be prepared with utmost care. Contracts awarded on erroneous offers may result in serious financial loss or difficulty for the bidder. Before preparing an offer, close study should be made of the specifications to be sure that all requirements can be met. Particular attention should be given to the instructions to bidders and to conditions of purchase, delivery, and payment. The negotiated purchase procedure is more flexible than the sealed bid procedure. There is greater opportunity to seek modification of specifications, conditions of purchase, or delivery and payment. If the contracting officer decides to negotiate on a firm's proposal, a complete cost analysis may be required. Therefore, the firm should be prepared to support the quotation with facts and figures. One of the most significant changes government acquisition reform is the increased importance of best value. Best value means that rather than making awards to the lowest bidder as it generally did in the past, the government can now make awards for the item that best satisfies its needs at a slightly higher price. If the agency or purchasers are going to make an award based on best value, they will include a description of the evaluation criteria, award factors, 
and factors other than the price that will be considered in making a contract award. Let's take a look now at proposal submission. Each proposal is unique. A list of common elements found in a typical proposal include executive summary, resume and qualifications, safety plan if required, past performance, exhibits if applicable, make sure proposal is well written, proofread the proposal to eliminate last minute mistakes, complete and sign all paperwork correctly. And that wraps it up. If you have any questions, simply give us a call or email us and we'll gladly get back with you at the earliest convenience. We thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of Dynamic Contracts Consultants.